All right, everybody. Um, we're going to go to the last uh, last part of this unit where we tie everything together and we talk about something called a phase diagram. Okay, and the phase diagram is a different type of look than we've seen with the heating and cooling curve. And, and the part of the heating and cooling curve that we looked at, again, if you recall uh, what we did a, a while back with the heating and cooling curves, was, was this thing where we went up like that. And we have this angle where you had your phase changes were taking place at the flat parts of the curve. Again, your melting and freezing took place here, and your boiling and your condensing took place here. Okay, with a phase uh, change. Now, again, with this curve, there was one thing we weren't mentioning, and that was the pressure. Okay, because we were assuming that this curve was taking place at one atm. Okay, and and the, and the case is it usually does, but there are instances where the pressure also changes. And when, if you change the pressure, then you change this curve. This curve doesn't really operate the same way. So hence, we have something called a phase diagram, okay? So really simply what a phase diagram is, it's a, a ways to, to, to look at the, um, the effect of the pressure changes and temperature changes on the phase of a pure substance, okay? And there's several different, you know, main things I want you to know about this, but again, don't get too crazy. And if you take a look at this page, Okay, and again, there's no PowerPoint here. You're looking at the page uh, in your in your um, your packet, page 24. Okay, and again, a lot of this you can read about too. It's going to be it's going to be in the reading here. Okay, but a couple of highlights. So pressure would be on this axis, temperature down here. Okay, and just a couple of things to keep in mind uh, along the way. And you'll see that you have this line that separates the solid from the liquid and a line that separates the liquid from the gas, and then a line that separates the solid from the gas. So it's really three regions. You have a solid region, you have a liquid region, and you have a gas region. So what's nice about these curves is if you pick any temperature and any pressure, and you line up their points, then you simply would know what phase you'd be in. Okay, And that real, would really be the, the important point on this. All right, so for example, you know, if you were... Uh, you know, if you had a temperature of, say, X here and a pressure of Y there and you were there, then you could know that this would be in the solid, solid phase. Okay, that's the important thing to know. All right. So, uh, again, it really just shows you those points. Now, a couple of interesting points about this. There is a position. Now, when you're on this line, that's where your phase changes. So let's just say your pressure was um, – I'm just going to make this up here. Let's just say – your pressure, let's just say you had a line here going across here. I'm just going to draw a dotted line, okay, and call this 1 atm, all right? So if that's the 1 atm line, right here where you would cross from the solid to the liquid would be your melting point, right? And that melting point would line up to a roughly zero Celsius. So again, this is, I'm just using water as an example here. Now again, then you would be a liquid. So if, as you move, so think about moving in this direction. If you just increase the temperature and not the pressure, and the pressure was 8 to 1 atm, you'd melt here, okay? And if you continued to heat and follow the temperature line, you would eventually heat the liquid. Again, this is, again, now you're in the liquid zone. You would then reach a point at which you would cross the phase change line vaporization. Where would that take place? You guessed it, 100 Celsius. That would be your boiling point. So this would be a BP. So it looks, I mean, again, if you look at this, this curve, it's, it looks a little different than this curve, but it's really here you're going up stepwise because you're assuming the pressure is not changing. However, if you went this way, so actually when you're on the line here is when you're on this flat curve, and when you're on the line here is when you're on the flat curve here. The slants would be in your areas, okay? So, but again, what's so value about the curve? The values of the curve is that you don't have to be at 1 atm. Okay, so for example, if you were if you were down here at cold temperatures, and you had very low pressure, okay, notice that you would go from the solid phase to the gas phase, and you would have no liquid. You don't have a liquid phase for this substance until you get up at higher pressures. All right, so that's interesting to know. Now, point number one, you really want to know about this, and right here, this point is really important. That's called the triple point. The triple point is the point at which it's the temperature, okay, and the pressure at which. Okay, so let's just erase everything here. Okay, think of the triple point as the temperature and pressure at which you melt, freeze, vaporize, condense, sublime, and deposit all at the same time. So if you were to lower the pressure to, say, that level, 
and this level, this, this particular substance would be boiling, freezing, melting, condensing, subliming, and depositing all at the same time. If this was water, just imagine having boiling ice water. So that's called the triple point. Again, triple mean all three phases. Okay, so there's a triple point pressure, and there's a triple point temperature that you could be at that would be here. And all, fa all phases would be changing phase at that particular moment. So that's kind of cool. All right, the other main point of, a criti uh, of this is called the critical point. And if you notice up here, the graph ends. It, it kind of ends. There's an end to the graph. All right, and that's simply telling us that once you get to a certain point, okay, and they call it the critical point, it doesn't matter how much pressure you put on, okay, the liquid, the, I'm sorry, the gas will never change to a liquid, all right, which means the gas has such high kinetic energy. Think about a gas where the particles are moving around at such high temperature. The kinetic energy is so high that no matter how much pressure you place on this, you can't get these gas particles to liquefy. You can't get them to slow down. You can't get them to get into a liquid. Their intermolecular forces just can't get together to, to, to liquefy them. So really what you have is you have this, this, this weird state here. Uh, and it's neither a liquid nor a gas. It's actually both. So this area here, they sometimes call that a super critical fluid. Okay. So it's, it's super critical because it's above the critical point. So it's above. Super means above. Like super saturated would be above saturated. So you're above the critical point. Okay. And you're a fluid. So a fluid is nor, you know, liquid nor gas has properties of both. So Supercritical fluids are under a lot of investigation these days, a lot of study, uh, and they have some interesting properties because they act as gases, but they can also dissolve things like liquids can. Uh, and one of the, one of the, you know, the, the, the well-known uh, uses of, so, of supercritical fluids or supercritical CO2 is if I had supercritical CO2 and I take some coffee beans, okay, and I put coffee beans through the supercritical CO2, out would come decaf, okay? So you'd have decaffeinated coffee because the caffeine would be stuck in the supercritical fluid, all right? So that's one really brief way that this could be used. And of course, once you take that decaffeinated coffee and bring it back to room temperature and room pressures, the CO2 would just, would, would just come out of it and be harmless, okay? These days, they use chemicals to kind of decaffeinate the coffee, which isn't as healthy, all right? So again, this has a, super, this has a critical temperature and it also has a critical pressure. All right, so think of this as the gas particles are so wild that there's no way that you can liquefy them. Okay, so that is a general uh, phase diagram. Those are the two main points you want to know. All right, now if you take a look at what's here uh, in this readings, what I just explained to you would be what you see in the graph. So it's easy to read about it. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention uh, was what if you look at the phase grain for actual for an actual substance such as water. Okay. And what you'll notice about this, about a regular substance, is this line right there, if you notice the slight slant towards the left, which means that if you pick a temperature, right, so let's just say I pick a temperature right here, and I just increase the pressure, if you notice that when you put pressure on that solid, it just stays in the solid phase. If you take a look at the water one, you'll notice something very interesting. You'll notice that water as a solid this line actually gets thrown back in the opposite direction. It almost has like a negative slope to it. So it's interesting that if you are at one ATM, let's just say you're at one ATM and you're at the melting point of water at zero Celsius, okay? If you actually continue to put extra pressure on that piece of ice, notice that it actually liquefies. So water has this interesting open structure that if you put enough pressure on it, and again, you'd have to go several ATM, you can actually liquefy this. And that's really strange for a solid. Normally, solids just remain solid. This is liquefying a solid by adding pressure to it. So a very interesting, interesting phase for water. And that's something you want to keep in mind. Again, water does have a critical point. Uh, and here is actually the triple point for water. The triple point for water is actually 0 0.0098 Celsius, okay? And actually, 4.58 tor. So again, remember that you know one ATM is actually 760 tor. So you would have to lower that pressure all the way down to 4.58, 
and lower the temperature to less than slightly less than less, slightly more than zero Celsius, and then you would have boiling ice water. You would actually have a beaker of water with a piece of ice in it, and this would be boiling, which is just a strange thing. Okay, so that's really what the phase diagram for water looks like. Again, that's the strange thing is that water has this this negative sloped uh, you know melting point line. Okay, so just Again, that's that's the really the big deal. Again, here's the normal boiling point for water. Okay, the normal BP for water would be here at, at 100 Celsius, 1 ATM, 760 Tor, and that's fine. All right. So that's really the end of the story here. Again, um, here's just more inf information. Again, things you want to remember about about this. Okay, and then if you go to the last page, uh, you will see some multiple choice questions that you want to review here. Again, I'll leave them here. Uh, again, I did post this on assignments for everybody so you have that on canvas okay we can kind of leave them here if you need to take a look at the questions you can take a look and, and rewind them and go over them okay and again the answers are here so b a b c d a are the answers so um you know if you're playing along b a b c, um c d a are your answers here Okay, and again, you can t you can take a look at fill in, fill in the blanks down here. Again, I did post this in Canvas. All right, so any questions, let me know. Again, if you have to go back over, I uh, don't expect you know a ton of information on this, but it's just interesting to be able to see things at different pressures rather than just different temperatures. Okay, have a great day.